This video is about the uh, next chapter from GDP, and it's about calculating the CPI. Because CPI is called the consumer, I'll write it up here, the consumer price index. And like the GDP deflator, the consumer price index is a way of calculating the cost of living at a given year and then ultimately one can get the inflation rate from one year of the CPI to the next. And um, with the CPI, the, the ratio is going to look fairly similar to the GDP deflator. The big difference is that with the GDP deflator and real GDP, we're holding prices constant and with the consumer price index, we are holding quantity constant because we were wanting to look at the change in the price. So your book has five steps to calculate the CPI. Number one is something called fix the basket. Fix the basket means that what is our Q's? What is our quantities? Now oftentimes these numbers will be given to you. So we have these numbers here, Q wine, Q bread. But in the real world, what people are looking for are the actual quantities that people are buying, and then we and then the and then we're finding the prices according to those according to those items, and of course the change. Third step is compute the basket cost. Basket cost is very much the same as what we did for the GDP, and that would be the price times the quantity. Fourth step is to choose a base year. So we have to choose a base year, a, a notion of comparison um, between what is, what is uh, current and what, and, what, and what we're measuring from, and ultimately the index. And very much like the GDP deflator, it is going to be the price times quantity of the current year over the price times quantity of the base year. And, all, and finally, we're going to calculate the inflation rate. And the inflation rate, I always like to say, is the change over the base. We'll do that as our final step. Things will get a little small right here when I'm doing my calculations, but I will do my best to make it relatively clear. Now, if, now if you watch from the last chapter, you saw that I used an example of bread and wine, and I used these same prices, but now I'm going to be holding wine constant uh, because, that, because we're looking for the change in prices, not necessarily the, cha um, the change in quantities. So our first step, CPI for 2020. That is going to be this year right here. We know what the quantities are. We know what the prices are. We're going to be calculating the basket cost. And we're, getting, in essence, going to be using this formula right here. So price times quantity for the current year. That would be 1 times 70 plus 5 times 80 over the base year price times quantity. So that is going to be 1 times 70 plus 4 times 80, so it's going to be, and um, this is going to be 470 over, so the CPI for 2020 is the, uh, is the, ba is the um, current year price times quantity, which is 70 plus 400, gives us 470, so it would be 70 1 times 70, 5 times 80, plus 400 gives us 470, and it will be the base year um, price times quantity, which is going to be 1 times 70 plus 4 times 80. 70 plus 320 is 390. 470 divided by 390 gives us 120. Times it by 100 gives us 120. If you don't times it by 100, it will be 1.2. But with these index numbers, we always want to multiply by 100 to give us a three-digit number. 
All right, so final step. The inflation rate from 2020 to 2021, we have the CPI for 2020. Now we want to get the CPI for 2021. It's pretty much the same steps as we did for 2020. It would be the price times quantity for the current year, which is 2021, over the price times quantity for the base year. So for the current year, it's going to be it's going to be 2 times 70, 140, plus 6 times 80, 480, over the base year price times quantity, which should be the same as this. 70 plus 320. That's going to give us 390. And this number, 140 plus 480, 620. And that's going to give us 160. And now we have the CPI for 2021 and the CPI for 2020. To get the inflation rate, it's the change over the base. The change would be 160 minus 120. over the base, which is 120. This number is going to be 0.33 times 100 gives us 30% change in prices from 2020 to 2021. And that is definitely something that I would ask you in a exam or a quiz to make these kinds of calculations. I would absolutely have on notes these five steps and the general, and in particular, this thing, because that would really help you to do these calculations. Also remember that for calculating the CPI, we hold the quantities constant, and for calculating the GDP, in particular the real GDP, we hold the prices constant. All right, that is it for calculating the CPI and calculating the inflation rate using the CPI.